Project Manitoba. Welcome back to another show, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day as always. Well, Manitoba, I hope you guys had an awesome weekend. Mother Nature finally gave us a break from the minus 30, minus 40 temperatures we've been seeing um, over the past week or so. Um, And that has caused a lot of school closures over the past week and highway closures throughout Manitoba. And not only have we been getting hit with such severe cold temperatures, this year is the third most snowfall Manitoba has gotten since we've started recording it. So Manitoba, we've been getting hit with both sides of this, uh, this winter. It's been pretty incredible. But Manitoba, I know that uh, Ukraine uh, is dominating the news cycle at the moment, but I just want to let you guys know um, there still are and has been anti-mandate protests uh, protests happening throughout the province, and uh, they will continue to do uh, to be held until all mandates are dropped. Um, There is a slow roll being uh, organized for today, March 1st, at 5.30 at the Forks, pulling out at 6 o'clock. Um, And they're in protest of the True North keeping the Vax Pass for the Jets and the Manitoba Moose, even though the province is dropping the the requirements. So, I mean, it blows me away that that, um, True North is doing this. And there's also a freedom chain being organized, and that's taking place throughout Canada. And uh, that's happening on March 5th. And the goal is for everyone to park on the side of the road and link hands, creating a human chain throughout Canada. I'm not 100% sure where exactly it's taking place. I think the South Perimeter, but you guys can just uh, look on Facebook and find out. But Manitoba, over the weekend... There was, uh, like I said, there was protests that did take place. And... um, uh, I didn't get down there. I didn't get down to the the one that took place at the Forks. Um, I seen a lot of live feeds coming from uh, the Forks, the anti-mandate protest. So instead, I went to the Manitoba Legislative Building uh, where they were having the Ukraine, Ukraine rally, stand with Ukraine. So I did a live stream uh, from there. But uh, like I said, there was a protest. And um, by all accounts, it uh, it looked pretty... Pretty amazing. Uh, But from CBC, anti-mandate protests gather at the Forks in Winnipeg. More than 100 rallied near a Canadian Museum for Human Rights on Saturday. A group of more than 100 people gathered outside the Canadian Museum for Human Rights at the Forks in Winnipeg on Saturday to protest COVID-19 mandates. But for Donald Bouchard, the gathering was about more than that. Quote, we're here to get our hearts together and understand that we're all in this together. We're here to heal the division between people, end quote. And while Manitoba has already announced it will soon lift its remaining pandemic restrictions, including mask requirements and vaccine mandates, Bouchard said it doesn't change anything for protesters. We're here whether the mandates are lifted or not, he said. Uh, Many at the event carried Canadian flags and signs with messages about freedom, and one person brought a treat for many kids in attendance. Robert Carrier said it was important to him to bring the maple syrup treats that people could usually get at Festival de Voyager to the rally since the annual event this year requires kids under 12 to be accompanied by a fully vaccinated adult. So like I said, Manitoba, there was even uh, stuff for the kids to do. So it was a very uh, family-friendly event. Quote, that's why I wanted to do this for the children that have a parent that aren't vaccinated and want to have some fun and get a sense of normalcy again end quote, said Carrier. So we're just here to ha- uh, and having fun. A lot of smiles, a lot of pleasures, and joy. So like I said, Manto, I did watch a lot of the live feeds, and the vibe seemed amazing. Nothing but love and happiness, and like I said, just family fun. So if you haven't made it out to any one of these protests, I mean, they're called, they're protests, but I mean, they're, they're like, picnics um but you really should try and make it out to one of them uh relying on the mainstream media to show you what really takes place is just not going to give you an accurate picture but manitoba uh i did go to the legislative building and i did a facebook live feed to see what was going on um and what our politicians had to say 
And since a lot of them were in attendance, even uh, Mayor Bowman, Stephenson, a lot, a lot of liberals were there. Um, so if you want to hear what they had to say, just fast forward to uh, go to the live feed on Facebook and fast forward to the speech part. Um, but to, it, just so you guys do know, it's just the typical ear candy stuff. They just said what people wanted to hear with with no actual accountability behind what they said. Um, but the event definitely was a big uh, turnout. Uh, from CTV News, we stand with Ukraine. Thousands rally outside Manitoba Legislature to support Ukraine. Thousands of people gathered outside the Manitoba Legislature to show support for Ukraine amid the ongoing Russian invasion. Ukraine flags flew high among a large group of Manitobans who came together Saturday evening in front of the Manitoba Legislative Building. Organizers estimate about 5,000 people attended the rally which was hosted by the Ukrainian Canadian Congress Manitoba Provincial Council. Quote, Tonight we are sending Vladimir Putin a message. Manitoba stands with the people of Ukraine and we stand against this unjustified invasion. End quote, said Manitoba Premier Heather Stephenson, who spoke during the rally. Quote, Many of you have families over in Ukraine right now. Our message to you is that we are here for you. End quote. Stephenson said she has informed the federal government that the province of Manitoba will do its part to take in Ukrainian refugees looking for a safe haven and expedite Ukrainian immigration applications through the provincial nominee program. She pointed to a memorial on the legislative grounds recognizing the horrors of the 1932 Holodomor, a forced famine that killed millions of Ukrainians by starvation. Quote, the Ukrainian people have suffered under the rule of an e evil dictator before, she said. Manitobans and all Canadians must do everything we can to make sure that never happens again, end quote. Manitoba Liberal MP Dan Vandell said Canada has condemned Russia's attack on Ukraine. Quote, President Putin's brazen disregard for international law, for democracy, for human life, are a massive threat to security and the peace around the world, he said. We stand united and steadfast in our support for Ukraine's sovereignty, and we stand in solidarity with the Ukrainian people's right to decide their own future in a free and democratic state, end quote. Winnipeg Mayor Brian Bowman said the rally uh, in Manitoba was one of many taking place across the country. Quote, we want to communicate a very clear message. This war is unjustified. It is illegal. It needs to stop, he said. We stand with Ukraine, end quote. So in addition to the rally, the legislative building will also be lit up blue and yellow. The rally comes as many people, businesses, and organizations in Manitoba, including some Russian people, are condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And just so you know, here is the province's uh, official press release that was released on February 24th. Manitoba government pledges support for Ukraine. And this is at news.gov.mb.ca. Premier Heather Stephenson offered Manitoba support to the democratically elected government of Ukraine, noting moves by Russia to send troops into eastern Ukraine are a violation of Ukraine's territory and sovereignty. Quote, Manitoba is home to thousands of citizens of Ukraine descent who have watched Russia's buildup of military forces in the region and repeated threats to the sovereignty of Ukraine, end quote, said Stephenson. Quote, it is unacceptable behavior and I thoroughly condemn those actions, end quote. The Premier said she agrees with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's condemnation of Russia and the federal government's promise to impose economic sanctions on Russia. Stephenson said, she also supports the government of Canada's decision to send military equipment and give financial loans to Ukraine. The province, uh, sorry, the provocation of Russia is in the region, sorry, my bad. The provocation by Russia in the region must be a constant worry to more than 180,000 Ukrainian Manitobans, noted Stephenson. It is hard to imagine how difficult watching the news must be for so many Manitobans who have loved ones in Ukraine, she said. I share your concerns and Manitoba will support the federal government in everything it can to pressure Russia 
and end its aggression and restore peace in the region. So that was the official news release from the province of Manitoba. And now the Manitoba liquor marts are pulling Russian products off the shelf, which when that was announced at the rally, it got a huge cheer. Um, but I mean, it does absolutely nothing for Ukraine or for anyone. This is just a virtue signal. There is no mention of Russian oil being pulled from the markets. You know, something that actually makes up the majority of their economy. But no, we're pulling Russian vodka. Uh, but nonetheless, that's what's happening. From the Winnipeg Sun, Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries is joining Crown Liquor stores in several Canadian provinces to pull Russian products from their shelves in light of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, quote, among the thousands of products we carry, only two came from Russia, one vodka, Russian standard vodka, and one single-serve beer, Baltica 7 Premier, Premium Lager. We have removed those two products from shelves in all Manitoba liquor marts, end quote, it wrote on its Twitter account. So Manitoba joins Ontario, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and Labrador and British Columbia in making similar moves on Friday. On Thursday, Premier Heather Stevenson offered Manitoba support to the democratic elected government of Ukraine, noting moves by Russia to send troops into eastern Ukraine are a violation of Ukraine's territory and sovereignty. And she just goes on to read a quote that I already said. In Ontario, Finance Minister Peter Bethlen Falvey said he was directing the Liquor Control Board of Ontario to withdraw products produced in Russia as well. Ontario joins, or sorry, quote, Ontario joins Canada's allies in condemning the Russian government in the Russian government's act of aggression against the Ukrainian people, and we strongly support the federal government's effort to sanction the Russian government, um, Bethlen Falvey said in an emailed statement. Quote, we will continue to be there for the Ukrainian people during this extremely difficult time. A spokesperson for Beth, Bethlen Falvey said the LCBO carries approximately 25 Russian-produced products and said the government was told stores could remove them within 24 hours. So there you go, Manitoba. So far, we are removing uh, booze off the shelves, which I find hilarious. Again, nothing about oil, <laughs> something that makes up the majority of their economy, but we're talking about vodka. Either way, oh well. But um, speaking of Manitoba businesses, uh, from Global News, the pandemic cost Manitoba municipalities nearly $92 million. So businesses were hit, Municipalities were hit hard. This is according to a survey. Uh, so, I mean, it's not 100% for sure. Manitoba, uh, from Global News, Manitoba's municipalities experienced a combined $91.8 million in operating loss in 2021 and are anticipated a $53.3 million shortfall this year. This figure comes from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, AMM, which sent out a survey at the beginning of January to gauge the financial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. AMM says 77 of the province's 137 municipalities responded. The results were then ext extrapolated to account for all of them. Quote, these are all the costs that municipalities are trying to absorb while trying to balance a budget, and it's extremely difficult, end quote, says Cameron Blight, AMM's president. Quote, in some cases, municipalities have had to cut back services because we only have one way of ge generating revenues, and that's through taxation. And the last thing municipalities wanted to do right now is put more pressure on their residents, end quote. Blight noted that some of the numbers were actually lower than expected, but that came at the expense of municipal services. In some cases, that meant putting capital projects on hold, scaling back resources at facilities and community centers, or cutting back staff. The results show a slightly majority, 52%, believe it will take two to eight years to financially recover, 
One third were unsure and 2% believed it would take a decade or longer. They also reported $7.3 million in pandemic costs, such as staffing needs, purchasing protective equipment, and enforcing public health orders. The AMM intends to provide the findings to the other levels of government as they consider additional finance assistance ahead of spring budgets. Blade says while previous transfers are greatly appreciated, the numbers show much more is needed. Quote, municipalities are continuing to call upon the federal and provincial governments to provide supports for these municipalities, not just those with transit, Blade says. We need all municipalities to receive some sort of funding to help them offset the losses they've been facing in 2021 and beyond. So, like I said, the, uh, something that blows me away with businesses being hit hard and... Um, even municipalities being hit hard. Why? Why would, um, like, why would some businesses still decide to keep the Vax Pass? I mean, these, these next two articles are mind blowing. With all the hardships that took place, with all the loss of revenue over the last two years, the segregating, the polarization, and still some businesses are are, are thinking of or are, are keeping the Vax Pass. From CBC, COVID-19 vaccine cards no longer required starting Tuesday, today, at most places in Manitoba. But businesses, organizations can still choose to ask for them. Starting Tuesday, you won't need a COVID-19 vaccine card to get into many businesses and venues in Manitoba as the provincial government ends proof of vaccination requirements brought in to deal with the pandemic. However, businesses can still choose to keep vaccine and mask requirements. Premier Heather Stephenson announced a change last month at a news conference where she said Dr. Brent Rusin, Manitoba's chief public health officer, announced plans to drop all pandemic-related restrictions by March 15th including mask mandates. The Manitoba Immunization Card and Verifier app will still be available to businesses, venues, and other organizations that want to continue to ask for the vaccine cards after March 1st, the uh, the province said in a news release last month. Some businesses have already said they plan to keep requiring proof of vaccination after March 1st. That includes True North Sports and Entertainment, which announced last week that people attending hockey games or concerts at the Canada Life Centre in downtown Winnipeg will still have to show their proof of immunization to attend, a.k.a. why there's a slow roll being organized tonight because of that. But a recent membership survey conducted by the Manitoba uh, Chamber of Commerce found that close to one-third of the 440 businesses who responded said they plan to continue to require proof of immunization from COVID-19 from either staff, customers, or both. Another 23% were unsure what they plan to do come March 1st, the survey says. Meanwhile, 42% said they plan to drop the requirements entirely. So one-third is not sure. Or sorry, one-third said they plan on continuing to require it. That blows me away. When it comes to masks, about 20% of businesses surveyed said they plan to keep mask requirements for everyone, while 27% said they were unsure. The results suggest some businesses don't feel ready to drop the restrictions entirely, said Chuck Davidson, president of the CEO of the Manitoba Chamber of Commerce. Going, a quote, going from all these restrictions that they've been dealing with for the past two years to going to none, It's going to be a cautious approach and a lot of businesses are going to take, he said. So, I mean, I I don't know why any business would keep any restrictions in place. From Global News, Winnipeg businesses employ, quote, wait and see method on mandates. (laughs) With vaccine mandates expiring Tuesday and mask, uh, sorry, yeah, with vaccine mandates expiring Tuesday and mask mandates on March 15th, In Manitoba, local businesses are deciding how they want to proceed in order to keep staff and customers safe. Winnipeg Chamber of Commerce President Laurel 
Rem, Remillard said many of his members are taking a wait and see approach when it comes to maintaining or completely removing some restrictions. Quote, we are definitely hearing from a lot of our members. We're reaching out to them, talking to them and getting a sense of where they are leaning. Uh, she told 680 CJOB. Businesses have not made a decision one way or the other, he said. Quote, businesses really are concerned about potential backlash primarily for their public-facing staff, he said. There is significant concern that if they proceed with a vaccine mandate, that some of the issues we've seen throughout the pandemic will become even more heightened for their staff, so there's a lot of trepidation in the business community, end quote. If there's any consensus, he said that many businesses will be moving away from requiring vaccinations, but strongly encouraging customers and staff to continue to wear masks. So, I mean, I'm all for encouragement, but let's drop the requirements already, for fuck's sakes. This is unreal. I I mean, I can't believe that one-third of the businesses are still thinking of keeping them. Blows me away, man. What's that saying? Get woke, go broke? (laughs) Like, uh, Well, Manitoba, in other news, though, Safeway Fresh co-workers in Manitoba voted to go on strike... I mean, they really should have done this about six months ago, and they would have been able to get whatever they asked for. But uh, from CBC News, workers of two grocery chains owned by Sobeys Capital Inc. pushing for better working conditions. Unionized workers of two grocery chains with locations in five Manitoba cities have voted 98% in favor of a strike mandate. Over the weekend, United Food and Commercial Workers Local 832 members who work for Safeway and Fresh Co. gave their union the strike mandate as it negotiates a new contract. The union said workers for the grocery chains, which are owned by Sobeys Capital Inc., are pushing for better working conditions. Jeff Traeger, UFCW 832 president, said in a statement Monday that the employer has made a huge profit during the pandemic, while employees have worked very hard despite increasing risks and stress. He said in a statement that Sobeys Capital Inc. has regularly called its employees heroes, but now it's time to show their gratitude in a more meaningful way. UFCW and Sobeys Capital Inc. have been at the bargaining table since late 2021. The current contract expires March 19th, and the two sides are expected to continue bargaining Tuesday. The union represents about 2,000 Safeway and Fresh co-workers in Brandon, Dauphin, Nipua, Thompson, and Winnipeg. So... Safeway's on strike. And uh, in other news, there's been a couple fires over the last couple days, uh, over the last week, sorry. A minor one in Winnipeg, um, a bus shelter catches fire in downtown Winnipeg. Um, a bus shelter on the corner of Portage Avenue and Spence Street went, went up in smoke Monday morning just before 10 a.m. Two plainclothes Winnipeg police officers, Constable Kyle Park and Constable Chad Swinnerchuck were patrolling the area downtown when they saw the shelter engulfed in flames. The officers believe that people might have been inside and the shelter is frequent uh, because the shelter is frequented by members of a nearby encampment. The officers used an axe and fire extinguisher in their police car to shatter the glass and extinguish the flames. A sleeping bag, clothing, furniture, and other items were found in the shelter. Nobody was inside the shelter at the time and at the time of the fire, and nobody was injured. So that is a good thing. And the other fire that happened in Manitoba, unfortunately, was a fatal fire, and it took the life of a Manitoba man. The RCMP are investigating. Uh, From CBC News, RCMP investigation, fatal house fire in the RM of Westlake Gladstone. 24-year-old man pulled from fire and pronounced dead. A 24-year-old man is dead after a house fire at a rural residence in the arm of Westlake Gladstone, southwest of Lake Manitoba, according to a news release from the RCMP. Police responded to a fire on February 27th around 6.30 p.m. on 71 Road West, RCMP said. Family members of the man came to the house and noticed flames coming from the home, according to the RCMP's initial investigation. One of the family members went inside and pulled the man out of the house Uh, but he was uh, pronounced dead at the scene, RCMP said. Nobody else was in the house at the time. 
The cause of the fire has not yet been determined, but is not believed to be suspicious. Spruce Plains RCMP said the Office of the Fire Commissioner continues to investigate. And Manitoba. I have to admit, after going down to the Freedom Convoy, I was at the legislative building for the last three weeks and being surrounded by all those Manitobans, all the love and happiness and smiles and hugs and like free food, coffee. It's very disheartening to get back into the daily crime news in Manitoba because here is Winnipeg being Winnipeg. From CBC News, early morning shooting sends two women to hospital. <laughs> Two women rushed to hospital early morning shooting in Elgin Avenue and Isabel Street area. Two, two women were sent to hospital early Monday morning after being shot at outside an apartment building in the 500 block of Elgin Avenue. Around 4.45 a.m., Winnipeg police responded to reports of a shooting in front of the apartment building. When they arrived, the windows had been shot out of the front foyer area. Officers followed a blood trail, which led them to two apartment suites, where they found two injured women. One of the women had been shot in the upper body and was taken to the hospital in critical, critical condition. The other woman, who had also been shot, was transported to the hospital in unstable condition. Both women are now stable. The two victims said they were shot while standing in front of the building waiting to be let in. The suspect is believed to be a male and unknown to the victims. And no arrests have been made. Winnipeg police are asking... Anyone with information to call Major Crimes Unit at 204-986-6219 or anonymously at Crime Stoppers 204-786-TIPS or 786-8477. So two people just randomly shot 4.45 in the morning. Unreal, Winnipeg. Some good news, three people have been arrested in connection with the homicide at the beer vendor earlier this month. So at least there's some good news. Three people have been arrested in connection with the killing of the 19, a 19-year-old man working at a beer vendor in Winnipeg. John Barron was killed on February 15th while working at the Travel Lodge by Wyndham Winnipeg Hotel on Notre Dame Avenue. Winnipeg police confirmed Monday in a news conference that the homicide involved an armed robbery followed by a shooting. Two of the men have been charged with second-degree murder and one has been charged with manslaughter. William Arthur Sampson, 37, was arrested February 25th after a search warrant was executed at a home in Grant Park. Sampson has been charged with second-degree murder and armed robbery using a firearm. Ryan Jerron Smith, 40 was arrested February 25th in the William White neighborhood and charged with second-degree murder and armed robbery using a firearm. And Robert Gordon Francis, 37, was arrested on February 16th at a traffic stop on Notre Dame Avenue and Isabel Street. He has been charged with manslaughter and armed robbery using a firearm. All three also received multiple additional charges. Police say the robbery was random and the suspects did not know Barion. Quote, this is a very sad incident. The victim, John Berrien, was very beloved in his community, and he was uh, and he was working, Constable Danny McKinnon told reporters. This was very an un unexpected set of circumstances where this robbery took place, and he was shot. On February 19, a group of over 200 people gathered at a vigil for Barron outside a beer vendor where he was killed. The vigil was organized by a Filipino watch group, 204 Neighborhood Watch. The Berrien family moved to Winnipeg from the Philippines. John was working at the vendor to save money for college. His friends said he dreamed of studying to become a chef. So, ugh, at least they were arrested in Manitoba. That's one good thing, I guess. And in other news, Winnipeg man charged in Camperville armed robbery. Police uh, say two men wearing high-vis jackets walked into a business. One of the suspects was armed with a firearm and demanded cash from the employee. The robbers fled from the undeclosed with an undeclosed amount of cash in a four-door gray 
vehicle with two smashed windows. The vehicle had a Manitoba-issued license plate attached. One of the suspects was identified as Corey Flamand of Winnipeg. He has been charged for his alleged involvement in the robbery with a firearm and two counts of failing to comply. And officers are still working to identify the second suspect. But they're still looking for them, so anyone with information on the whereabouts of Corey Flamand or information about the robbery in general, call 204-656-7000 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477. So at least, at least, I mean, these people are being charged, but man, this is why Winnipeg is the murder capital of Canada. It's like I said, Manitoba. It's so disheartening after being surrounded by all the freedom convoy people to get back into the daily news, and you're surrounded by this people murderers just reading about it daily, stabbings like the, you know Winnipeg. But Manitoba, that is going to do it for today's show. I kind of rushed it out. Um, like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff that helps out the show. You can follow me on Facebook, Manitoba Freethinker, YouTube, Manitoba Freethinker, um, Twitter, and TikTok, at MB Freethinker. Or, or you can go to my website, uh, mbfreethinker.wordpress.com, and you can get links to all the podcasts there. But Manitoba, next, I'm I'm hopefully going to get more organized in the future. This is the first time that I'm actually going to try and upload this audio version. But as well, I'm recording um, a video version as well. So that's kind of why I'm all over the map this time. But either way, Manitoba, I love you guys so much. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff that helps out the show. And I will try and do at least two shows a week. So stay tuned, Manitoba. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.